All right, guys, in today's video, we are going to be testing BattleBox. Now, BattleBox is a subscription service where they send you uh, outdoor and survival gear once a month. This video is not sponsored by BattleBox, but they did send me this box for free. So we are going to go through the box and we're gonna see what we think. This thing opened. First thing, Battle Box Mission 65 Breakdown. It's just like a little pamphlet that tells you about everything that's in the box. Um, you know I don't read directions. First thing that I see here is Axe with some more paperwork that probably do not need. So this Axe, or I guess it would be more of like a hatchet, is made by Condor. It has a really nice leather, um, I guess sheath is what you'd call this. That's nice. It's pretty sharp. This looks really nice. The uh, has a nice, nice heavy handle. The handle's really thick too. It's almost like the thickness of a of a standard axe handle. I have a couple other hatchets that I can compare it to. This one would probably be like I guess the most comparable. Maybe the heads are kind of kind of the same, except for this is obviously more of like tomahawk this isn't really a, like a hatchet this is more of a hatchet but you can see the thickness of the handle the head's roughly the same size actually pretty much exactly the same size but this handle is much beefier i really like that you could really especially if you have bigger hands if you have really small hands that kind of, kind of might be a problem we'll definitely definitely be testing that out that looks great it also has a nice flat surface here to be used as like a hammer this is the other hatchet i have the head's obviously bigger but you can see how small the handle is so this is kind of comparable to this, but obviously this looks way better. Next up, we have Instant Limb Lines Auto Fishing Device. We'll see what that's about here in a minute. We have an all-purpose water-resistant tarp 12 by 9.6. There's not really a whole lot of testing you can do with the tarp, but let's pull it out and see what kind of, see what kind of material this is. Oh, this is actually nice. Oh, this is actually really nice. Maybe, maybe we'll have to stretch this out in the backyard and see, see what we can do. Oh, <laughs> it says rescue me. I thought it said like resin cue or something, but rescue me. So this is going to be some type of rescuing device. Oh, it's a seat belt cutter and looks like a glass breaker, so that shouldn't be too hard to test. We have some Murphy's Mosquito Repellent Balm, lemongrass, rosemary, peppermint, cedar wood, is what it says. It smells good. Next, we have this flashlight. I can tell you right now that I'm gonna like this. And then last but not least, we have a Nature's Grill 60 minute grilling time, single use and disposable. Okay, so it's a single use grill. So it's just like a small compact grill. So we'll definitely be testing that out. And that's all, that's all that comes in the box. Let's start testing this stuff. So the first thing we're gonna test out is this rescue me tool. It is just two simple things, a glass breaker and a seat belt cutter. And don't ask me why, but I just so happen to have a seat belt that we can cut. Now it is used, not that that, that shouldn't really make much of a difference. This part, this lower part of the seat belt Pretty new. Let's see how hard it is for this thing to cut a seat belt. Let's see if maybe we can just like. Really? That was way easier than I expected. That was. That was very, that was very, very easy. Let's see if we can. Oh, yeah. So this thing would work, this thing would be an amazing seatbelt cutter. If you were like, if you were in a vehicle that was flipped over or something and you need, and you had one of these and you needed to cut your seatbelt, this thing would do the trick, no problem. This thing works perfect. I just kinda wanna do a bunch of cuts just to kinda see if it's gonna get dull real fast, which it doesn't seem like it's going to. Yeah, so you can see, seatbelt cutter, A plus. This thing could definitely save your life in a pinch. Now, I really wish that I had 
like an old junk car or something that I could test this glass breaker out on, but I do not. So, we're just gonna have to go with the only kind of glass that we have around here, which is a mason jar. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking that the glass is gonna be a little bit too thick for this thing, but I think the safety squints will do for now. Come on, don't roll. Let's see. Hmm. It dented it. I really wish, oh, you know what? I do have some thinner glass. Actually, I don't know if this is thinner. This is one of the, the pickle drinks from my uh, pickle video. I don't know if that's actually thinner glass, but it might work, maybe. Ow! Piece of the glass shot at my arm. You can see it, like, it, like, damaged it. Like, it did something to it, but it didn't shatter it. I wish I had something like better glass to test this on. Because it, you, I mean, I, you can tell that this would definitely shatter a window. Because a window is much more fragile than the glass made, like, for bottles. Because it's way thinner. And window glass is, like, actually made to shatter. So, there's, I have no doubt that this thing actually works. I just would like to see it work. Actually, I think I lied again. I do have a better candidate. That is this beaker. This beaker is probably more consistent with what, maybe do it this way. This beaker is probably more consistent with what window glass would be since it's a little bit thinner. Let's try this. Really? Is it because it's on the bottom? <sighs> who, who figured that breaking glass would be so hard? Mmm, see? There we go. You see, that works just fine. And this is, this is with glass that's not really made to shatter. So there's no doubt in my mind that if you were to do this on a window, it would shatter the window, no problem. Next, we're gonna go ahead and try out this hatchet. And obviously we need to test both functions of the hatchet. One, being a hatchet, and then two, being a hammer. So we will first do the hammer, which this is kind of just for fun. We, both, we all know that this is gonna work just fine. So we have a little drywall nail. That is actually a very nice hammer where it's so heavy and has that nice thick handle. So now let's trust a nail that's a little bit longer. I think I'm breaking the table. Okay, so you can see that works. So now let's go do what a hatchet is made to do. So as much as I wish that I did, I do not have any firewood, like any just like genuine firewood to split with this thing to kind of show how it works. But I do have um, one of these blocks and some of this, which I believe is oak maybe, or maybe it, I might have some other oak over there. And then I have like a piece of like a pallet, got, got the oak. So let's just go ahead and just kind of split some of this stuff up. Make sure there's no nails or nothing in here. Let's see how it performs. I would assume that it's going to do just fine with all of this. Oh yeah, split that just fine, just as you would expect. Let's go with this. <laughs> oh, that actually had a nail in it. A couple nails in it. So, obviously that's fine. This piece of pallet board, we know is gonna be fine. It's already split. It already split it. And now, let's, a real challenge is some oak. Maybe not. See if we can get like an actual like split. Why does it keep going to the side like that? I want it to like actually split. There we go. So obviously, as you can tell, this <laughs> this would be an amazing hatchet. This thing works flawlessly. Also, before we move on to the next thing, I feel like it is important to distinguish 
that this is a hatchet. This is not a small axe. This is not a full size axe. This is a, this is a hatchet. So you would be using this like a hatchet. Like you're not gonna be cutting down trees with this thing. You're not gonna be doing anything crazy. You're gonna be splitting. You, I mean, you could probably cut down. I'm sure, I have no doubt in my mind you can cut down a tree with this thing. But you'd be cutting down maybe small trees, cutting off branches, splitting firewood, things like that. So that's why I didn't go find a tree to cut down because that's just not what you're gonna use this for. So, but for what it is, a hatchet and a hammer, I like it. I think it's extremely high quality. It has a nice handle, it has a nice leather sheath. I love everything about it. I think it's great. Now let's move on to the Limb, instant limb lines auto fishing device. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you guys. I had no idea what this was or how to use it and I had to watch a YouTube video to show me how to use this. Once I learned how, to, how it's used, it is pretty cool. So what you do, you pull this thing out of here, you unwind this string and then you have this plastic piece and it has a hook on the end of it and this, this wire right here, it feeds up through here and then over and then down and around and back up to the top through this hook. So you have to kind of, you gotta kind of pull some slack through here. The way you can get your hook out. And this is the reason it's called a limb line. So what you would do, so you're gonna tie this to a tree limb, this end right here. So you would decide how, you would tie it obviously to a tree limb above water. So you would decide how deep you want your hook to be in the water. So you'd make that determination first. And then you would move this approximately like a foot or maybe even two feet above however high you want the, or however low you want your hook to be in the water. And I'm just gonna tie it up into the ceiling. This is how, exactly how it would look. So you would hang this from the tree limb and this, of course, the hook would be down in the water. And then you could sit and look at this and with the way this is set up, it would sit like this. And then once a fish, would bite the hook, then this little plastic piece would get pulled up into the air. If you got a fish, you'd be able to look at it and know, you could see that it's pointed down. Okay, I don't have a fish. And then once a fish bites, you could see, oh, I got a fish. It's basically just a really compact way to fish in a survival situation or camping if you wanted to set up three or four of these along like a bank line or something. And then you could just, if you have, say if you have like five or six of these, you can just look out and if you see, Two of them are sticking up, you know, oh, this one and this one has a fish, these three don't, whatever. I like it, I mean, I think it would work just fine for what it is, and it'd be, make fishing really easy, especially if you have multiple lines. It also comes with a little swivel, rather than just like tying the hook straight onto the string, so that's a nice little touch. This would be a great addition to any type of camping gear, survival bag, whatever. So, that is how that works. All right, now this next one, this one has me really excited because it's a flashlight. The reason that this gets me excited is because this flashlight very likely will become my new daily flashlight. For those of you that do not know, my normal daily job is I am a diesel mechanic. It seems like every time I turn around, I'm reaching for my flashlight. And I've had this flashlight for about four years and it served me well. This is a Streamlight ProTac 2, but this flashlight seems to be way better than this one. So number one, this flashlight is rechargeable. This one takes AA batteries. This one is also brighter. This one is 800 lumens. This one, 200, 250, 300, something like that. So this one's way brighter. And also this one, obviously it has the, the twist. So it, you can use it as a 90 degree flashlight or you can just twist it and use it as a regular flashlight. So that, I'm very curious to see how well this holds up. I would like to use this flashlight for a while and see how this feature holds up. Hopefully it would hold up really good. I don't, like, I, I've just never seen a flashlight that did that. And I think that is just so cool that you can have it, like, sitting somewhere and just use it this way or you can twist it and use it like, like a regular flashlight. Because especially, like, for doing what I do, I normally... Uh, finding like a spot that I can hook this pocket clip to and kind of like jam this flashlight in somewhere to to look at something or whatever. Whereas this, you can just twist it and just sit it down somewhere. Or I'm going to use this weight as a uh, as an example. This flashlight is also magnetic on the bottom, so you could just stick it somewhere. You could stick it here. You could you know just have it wherever. And let me see here. Let me turn this thing on. 
Okay, see it's on? Yeah, of course you can. You could have it sitting magneted on somewhere and then you could kind of twist it and move it around to get the light exactly where you want it. I really like this flashlight. This is really the only other flashlight that I have like experience with to base my to base this flashlight off of. So this flashlight also has, you can see, it also has like a green light, a red light, a red flashing light. It has different brightnesses, which I'm assuming that is probably 800 lumens. So if that's 800, yeah. So you can see that's 800, and this is probably 300-ish, and this has fresh batteries. So you can see how much brighter that is. I don't remember. Playing with it before, it has a red light, a green light. I think it has, it's supposed to have a strobe for the red and the green, as well as like an SOS for the red and the green. And then it's supposed to, and then for the white light, it has all the different levels. I think four different intensities or brightnesses. And then I think for each one of those levels, it has a strobe for each level. And then I think it also has an SOS for each level of brightness. It just has one rechargeable battery. I think this is an 18650, yeah, 18650. 2600 milliamp hour so if you had got some of these batteries say if you were going to put this in like a survival kit or something you could get a bunch of these batteries maybe three or four of them and just have them charged up so that way you never go without a flashlight and then while you're using it you can recharge these so that's pretty nifty and it's also i believe it's also waterproof uh, it says water resistant ip65 so whatever IP65 is. Once we get through testing the other stuff, and because it, it's getting dark now, once we get done through testing the other stuff, we will go outside and we will compare uh, the brightness of this flashlight to the brightness of this one so you can actually see a difference. All right, next up, and the part that I have been absolutely dying for because I am starving is this grill. You know, we gotta open this grill up and cook something on it. Oh, I just realized this. It says ready in five minutes. I'll be the judge of that. It has like this weird like sand everywhere. I don't know what it is. It's just be kind of kind of gentle. I don't want to really ruin anything. But so there's char so it comes with charcoal, these little charcoal discs. So I guess you're just supposed to light these charcoals. I need to read some instructions. <laughs> I know I normally don't follow directions, but is there a picture maybe I can look at? This is supposed to be like this. And this goes here. So then that would mean that this one is gonna go here. So we have this thing. And it has these little these little tabs right there that stick out for who knows what reason. Oh I am stupid. I was thinking that this went on top of here somehow, and then the grate where you put the food somehow went like this on top of it or something. Apparently that's not how this works. Apparently what you're supposed to do is put this together, and then this can go, it can lock in with these tabs. There we go. It can lock in with those tabs, and that way it kind of sits up off of the ground. Then this will sit on top of these tabs right there whenever you're ready to cook. Probably supposed to leave the grate off while it's while the charcoal is cooking or whatever. Make sure you place it on a non-flammable and sturdy surface. Uh, wood. Definitely not flammable. Okay, so it shows lighting it with a lighter. Uh, I don't have a lighter, but I have a blowtorch. Why is it doing that? I've never seen charcoal like that. I thought I was seen. I've always seen charcoal that like actually lights on fire and then like kind of simmers down. I've never seen it do this kind of stuff. I'm gonna sit this outside for a few minutes, approximately five minutes, I guess, and let it kind of do its thing. So it has been about five minutes. The charcoal has done its thing. I can confirm the bottom of this is really hot. So that's neat. That's why the, I guess the base is so important. So hopefully this uh, wood top table does not catch on fire. 
So that kind of brings me to my next question. This thing is made of just bamboo and cardboard. So I'm kind of curious what's going to keep this... Oh, it's hot. Kind of curious what's going to keep this from catching on fire. Guess we shall see. Because if this doesn't work out and I don't get to eat, I'm going to be so mad. All right, so what we are cooking, we're going to be cooking some turkey burgers. So let's... It's kind of underwhelming. It, doesn't, it didn't have that sizzle I was hoping for. We're going to get two of these on here. Well, this is really, <laughs> really underwhelming. I thought this would uh, be a little bit more rambunctious than this. So I don't exactly know what like what kind of charcoal this is or like what happened with the charcoal because like I said before I've never seen charcoal that like didn't catch on fire this just kind of it almost like it just it almost looked like electricity just kind of like shooting across all the all the charcoal and then it just kind of started like smoldering so I don't know if this is like a special type of charcoal or I have no idea but it, it never did actually catch on fire and then once I got it outside, it kind of like slowly, everything slowly started to get more red and heat up and stuff like a normal charcoal would. So I guess we're just going to kind of sit here and stare at these until they cook. All right, well, it's probably been, <clears throat> I don't know how long, but it looks like it's time to... <laughs> I need to flip these things. Is it burnt or is it what's happening here? Oh come on. Hmm. Oh, I just gotta go slow. That's not too bad. Please don't rip more. There we go. Okay, so so far, not a very good, very not a very good experience because it, the meat sticks to the bamboo, which I don't like. If you're in a survival situation, and this is all you got, you kind of don't have a choice. But at least, at least it looks like it's cooking pretty good. Although I am curious. Because you can see on the charcoal where the juices have dripped down. I'm sure that part of the charcoal is probably out. I'm curious if you had something really juicy on here, like say you had like a big steak that dripped a lot. I'm curious to, I'm curious if it would drip enough to kind of put out the charcoal. I would assume it probably would. So I guess we're going to wait probably another five minutes or so, maybe ten minutes, let these cook more. Then we'll give them a taste test. All right, so I think it is time for one of the best parts right here. Put one of these right here and put one of these right here. Those should melt relatively fast and then we can put them on buns and give them a taste test. All right, I think I'm gonna call that good just simply because I'm starving. I'm so excited for this. Put you right there, put you right there. You can see that the bamboo obviously has not burned. I guess this charcoal, like it feels really hot when you put your hand here. I guess maybe bamboo doesn't burn like I thought it did, or maybe there's something else here at play, but they did not burn. A little barbecue sauce. Oh, this is about to be so good. Hopefully it's not raw in the middle, <laughs> although it shouldn't be, it's been on there for like 30 minutes. Mmm, that is very, very good. The charcoal does not add any flavor. I kind of thought that maybe it would. It doesn't. It does not add any flavor. These taste exactly like they would if you were cooked on like any type of grill or like in, just in a, a pan on the stove or whatever. They taste exactly the same, which is good. This thing works. I mean, obviously, it cooks food. It does what it's supposed to do. Other than, my only complaint is that I wish there was something different 
you could do with the bamboo because as you saw the meat stuck really bad to the, to the bamboo whenever I went to flip the patty. If you were using it, maybe if you put like butter or something on it so it wouldn't stick. But that's my only complaint. Other than that, this thing works great. All right, and as promised, now we are going to see the difference between these two flashlights. This first one is the stream light that I told you that I've been carrying for about four years. You can see pretty bright. This is the one that can, comes in the box. And that is full power. Low, medium, high. You can see that's the green. I don't even know if you can, yeah, you can kind of see that's the red, that's the strobe, old flashlight, the new one. It's insane how much brighter that is. Anyway, that is the flashlights. All right, guys, so that is everything inside of the battle box, except for this tarp, which obviously we just kind of ran out of daylight. All I was gonna do anyway was just kind of stretch it out in the backyard so you can see how big it is. But obviously you can imagine how big 12 foot by nine foot is. And it's, you know, there's nothing really special about it. It's just a heavy duty tarp with tie downs. So we're not really missing a whole lot. But other than that, we have tested everything inside of the battle box. And overall I'm impressed. I think that particular box was, I think it was $160 from everything I see for everything that you get. I feel like that's a pretty good deal. Thank you to BattleBox for sending that to me. I will have their link uh, in my description so that you can order your own BattleBox. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.